What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to our FIFA 21 manager career mode here with the mighty Borough and today we are continuing our march towards the end of the Premier League season of course in the last episode, well I say the last episode, the last uh, bit of manager mode we did here on the channel was uh, during my live stream that I did at the weekend which was uh, yeah a lot of fun so uh, yeah huge thanks to everyone who joined me for that, we rattled through quite a few games which, uh, yeah, included a 3-3 draw against Sheffield United all the way through uh, Winnick, uh, Crystal Palace. We were beaten narrowly by Tottenham, drew against Leicester and then beat Newcastle in extra time to make it through to the FA Cup semi, no, quarter final. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. And that is one of the games we'll be playing in this very episode it's a big one. So we've got a league game against Watford and Aston Villa and then sandwiched in the middle a huge cup game for us. We want to make something of the FA Cup this season as of course um yeah, we've uh, we're going to be mid table in the league. I'm going to probably guess. And uh we've been given the easiest possible tie against the team we knocked out or beaten in the playoff final last season and that is at home to Bournemouth with the rest all being Premier League teams who are having to face one another. We're going to lose one of Wolves and City, one of Wolves and Arsenal. So if we can just get through this final banana skin, we're going to be in the semi-final of the FA Cup with a chance to get to Wembley. So that's going to be exciting. So that's a big game. But first of all, it is the league duty, and that is a way to Watford, who are having a bit of a torrid time. In fact, the other two teams who come up with us have had a horrible season. Norwich and Watford look in deep trouble with 10 games to go. Watford is six points adrift. Norwich are even further adrift. They're eight points from safety. So they both are going to need one hell of a great escape if they're going to survive in the Premier League, whereas we are looking quite comfortable up in 10th. And, well, there's such a big gap between Leeds and Burnley. You'd like to think any of the teams above even Sheffield United are going to be fine. So, yeah, we are miles clear of the bottom three. 19 points clear. Um, so, we could even start looking up. I mean, um, a couple of wins might get us near Everton. I'd like to maybe look at Newcastle as a possible target. Um, but I don't know if our consistency is quite there. But, nevertheless, let's head to the team sheet for this game away at Watford. So the team away to Watford then, um, a couple of changes as of course the cup game against Newcastle was only a few days back and it also went the full 120 minutes so we've got a few tight legs in the team. Bettinelli remains in goal, we have got Coulson in the back four alongside Mackinnon who comes in for Gibson. Grant Hall comes back in and Dyke Steele replaces Jed Spence who is not fit. McNair and Savlar alongside one another with Roberts, Balassi on the left, Murphy comes in on the right for Hudson Adoy, who is not fit 100%, and Danny Ings comes back in up front. On the bench, we've got Gibbo, who's going to stay there. Young Banks is on the bench as well as an option fullback. Morsi, Hudson Adoy, Tav Origi, and Ashley Fletcher. So, a t yeah, Watford are a team who absolutely ripped the championship to pieces last season and uh, beat us quite heavily both times we played them, or maybe one time and we struggled after that when we played them at home, but they were the dominant force in the championship. So, yeah, I don't know what the result was in a reverse fixture earlier in the season. Um, one of you guys might have to remind me of that. But uh, this won't be an easy game. And Watford look like they've got quite a few players who are far from fully fit. Messina and Saliba Dawson isn't fit either. Pesetto up front doesn't look too fit. So we can get at these. They do not look in good shape at all to a fabulous game. I'm sure the fans are too. Should be great. Well, it's fair to say they haven't always hit the heights in their home matches. Just look at their record, Lee. Yeah, just one win so far, and it's certainly a cause for concern, Derek. These fans are starting to ask questions of the players and the manager, and to be honest, it can't continue like this. They need to improve and improve quickly. Well, that is... A shocking home record, absolutely awful from Watford and that is a huge reason as to why they're having such a bad season. They were so good last year but that just shows the difference in levels between the Premier League and the Championship. I'm not too sure what's been the root cause of Norwich being bottom.
Here's Pesetto, who brings it down. It might be one of the few players that Wofford did bring in when they got promoted, but the squad doesn't look too different from the one who come up with us, and now with a good challenge. Murphy. He's coming through of a goal in the Leeds United match, Alan McAnally. It's a goal for Everton. Nine minutes played, 1-0. Many thanks, Alan. Here's Feminia. Coulson trying to keep him in the corner. He does cross it in and Delafield nods it across. And Will Hughes taps it in. And the worst possible start here at Vicarage Road. The cross come in, it was flicked on. Whether it was a shot or not, I don't know from Delafeu. And Dykesteel was just beaten to it by Will Hughes. And Watford, well, it's typical Borough. What a weak goal to concede. And we are behind to the worst home team in the Premier League. Will there be a quick response from Borough? Adam Massina. Will Hughes. Moving into the advanced position. Femenia. Well, they've got a newfound belief now, Watford, after that opening to... goal. Coulson's not going to let the cross get in as easily as it did before. Line, so a throw in here. Chalabar. Chalabar, he's stood up by Mackinnon. Oh, look at this. What a save from Bettinelli. That's looking. Straight out at him from Delafeu. It's about that poor effort. That really is awful. We need to, we need to get going in this game. Really uh, Wofford pressing us all the way backwards. Oh, a goal there. Alan it's a goal for West Ham United. It's been scored by Sebastian. Roberts has won a very unlikely header. Ings has dragged the defender out and Patrick Roberts is in behind, but he can't get his shot off. One minutes, please. One nil. Alan McAnally keeping us Pounced. up to date. Pounced on by and that was a very Watford defenders, and then that interceptions fell straight to cleverly. Kiko Femenia. And Hughes has it. Well, how has Hughes got past Murphy there? How has he got past Murphy? Oh, and Dykesteel's just let him. Let Messina walk past him. And that was another save for Bettinelli to have to make. Now Saddle. Here's Roberts, who's no longer a Borough player in real life. We've uh, just cut his loan short, so he's gone to Derby, which is quite sad. Here's Patrick Roberts. He's very much a Borough player in this career mode, though. And that's a good ball to Jacob Murphy in behind, looking for rings. Can't find him. Sits up for Saville. He puts the shot wide. And it was close. Well, it's all about timing. You've got to wait. Just seemed to sit up perfectly for Savile there. Unlucky. But, yeah, didn't catch that as well as he would have liked. Well, one header. He's Roberts. In He's played in Danny Ings. And what a save from the goalkeeper. Ings was pounced upon by William Saliba. Which forced him to not get the cleanest shot away and the keeper saved well. We're just starting to finally get into this game. Caused them a few problems. Let's join Alan McAnally. Oh! Goal that goal kicks hit Saliba. We got a they got away with one there. Thanks as ever for the update, Alan. Dyke Steel plays it into Jacob Murphy, forward, Roberts has beat his man with ease there. Roberts is still going. What a run this has been! Well, that wasn't a but it couldn't be finished. No, it was close. It was a decent effort. They'll keep plugging away, I'm sure. Did well up until that, and oh, it wasn't far away. It was inches. Well, the coach is kicking every ball down there in the technical area. I'm sure he thinks. Will Hughes. Will Hughes and plays it out to Messina. And Hughes has it. Like Steel again, doing really well on the cover. Very effective clearance. Well, Roberts has done really well to win that header. Of and don't forget, we have more Premier League action coming up for you on EA TV. It's Watford taking on. Oh, what a ball into Delafeu! Who's in behind Mackinnon? What a save! A lot of ground to push that away from danger. We had Bettinelli charging out there to make himself as big as he could, and Delafeu. 
Oh, well, we've overran that but with Coulson, but what a good save initially. But Watford are looking dangerous here. Can they make it count? Options in the middle. Chalaba. Good ball inside. What can he do from here? Cleverly. I'm going to defend here. Delefeu. Great interception by Hall. And we need some hope on the counter attack. And Balassi's found Patrick Roberts. There's nobody in the middle. Jacob Murphy's making the run, but we can't get the ball to him. And that's been the story of the game, really. And now Delefeu is miles out of. Uh, Dyke steals miles out of position. Hughes. And they are on the move again. They're inside here as Coulson does well. Oh, and Murphy's nicked it off Saliba, who's made a bit of a meal of that. Jacob Murphy might have the pace to take this all the way here. Murphy's in the Watford area. And Jacob Murphy does it all on his own. Thinks he's Ronaldo. I don't know why that's his default celebration, but there you go. Jacob Murphy gets us back in the game. And we desperately needed that. Well, here's the replay, and it's a decent move to evade the defender. Saliba's had a great game. That's if it was William Saliba. It might not have been, but they've had a good game defensively, Watford. I think it might have been Saliba, but whoever it was who lost out, it was a bad place to lose the ball, and, well, we just thought... Let's just run and run and run with Murphy and see how far we get. That's his fourth goal of the season. And we finally have a route back into this game. So a level contest. Balassi. Roberts. What a ball. What a ball that is to Jacob Murphy. Can he pick out Ings in the box? No, he can't. the danger is averted. Well, it's been a frustrating day for these fans. They want a goal. They're urging their team on to attack. Watford fans urging their team forward as they look for only their second home win of the season. Seen has had a tough game up against Dyke Steele, who once again is in his way. Well, they've decided to make a change. And, well, they're going to take him off. And he favours the inside route. Delafeu, and that's a huge interception by Paddy McNair. And maybe if Coulson can overlap. Ooh, and that's, that's a professional foul there on Balassi. As we were away on the counter-attack there. Yeah, that's what you call a professional foul by Chalibur. Could be an important foul, though. Oh, McNair losing the ball in Good midfield. Mackinnon, luckily, he was on the cover. And for Nee Dykesdale. So completely wasted that free kick. Murphy. Here is Murphy inside. Good play. Roberts. Ings. What a save. Goalkeeping of the very highest order. Worked out well. Great shot, great save. Keeper was equal to it, and this is turning out to be one hell of a finish. Watford fans screaming their team forward again. I feel like there is going to be a winner in this game, but I don't know who for. Delafeu. Don't know what that was. So Rigi and Hudson Adoy have come on as we call for the cavalry as Grant Hall is having a little run forward of his own. Ings tries to hold off their defender. Balassi now as we're trying to force a route through. He can't get past Feminia. Spot Savile. McNair. See if he can maybe get something going with 
Origi here, who again cannot get through this Watford defence. Origi does find half a yard and does let fly. But the keeper is equal to it again. As we push Watford back in hope of these three points. It's not been the greatest game from us at all. But apart from that earlier sloppy goal we conceded Watford haven't done much it's been all us really Balassi goes up for that it does come down to McNair it's a huge block in the end what a cross that is as well and well that was a great header from the centre back as I think that would have found Balassi wide open regardless the clearance is a bad one here's Origi here is Yannick Balassi what a turn but again, the keeper is equal to it. Fires it upfield again, only to give it straight back. Ings as we try and let it go to Yannick. And I think that might be it. So not quite the ultimate typical Borough performance, but drop points. It's with Isaac's success. In a game in which we maybe shouldn't, maybe we'll drop more than just the points. They've nicked a winner. Jared Dillafew has put Watford 2-1 up and they've stolen their second win of the season. What a finish from Dillafew. I can't believe it. I cannot well, I think the believe it. Feel the game slipping away here. He's showing his frustration on the sidelines. Oh man, last kick of the game. A game which we've not been at our best, but Watford haven't had a sniff. They've had two chances, and with the last kick of the game, they've beaten us here at Vicarage Road to claim only their second win of the season. Yeah, they needed these three. Typical Borough strikes again. Need to build on that and go again. It's all about momentum, Derek. Well, I don't believe we've lost that. That is, that is one of the most frustrating defeats I think I've had as Borough boss. Unbelievable. Cannot believe. That's, that's twice in the last two lots of fixtures. We did it against Sheffield United when we gave away a last-minute goal. Luckily, that was... To get a point but lost that game and uh, doesn't do much for us in terms of the table it does a canny bit for Watford who actually overtake Leeds so there is a little bit of solace in in that but uh, yeah that's uh, that just highlights our season and what has been the uh, the downfalls of it inconsistent results and losing to teams we shouldn't have we're still in 10th but uh, we're sort of from Villa downwards, we are in our own little mid-table group now. Um, Everton are a canny few points ahead of us now, as Wolves and Newcastle are even more adrift. So we are just falling into that mid-table, um, that horrible mid-table gap. But like I say, with nothing happening there, we now move on to what could be the biggest game, well... Maybe after the playoff final, maybe the second biggest game in our career mode so far. A chance to get into the FA Cup semi-final at home to Bournemouth. Let's do it. So a full week of rest for the players and it gives us a chance to go with our strongest 11, which you guys pretty much know of by now. Um, there are, you know, it's a toss of a coin in some areas, but the back four are back together. Um, hudson Adoy's is back in as well. And I'm just hoping that uh, there'll be a better performance by some of the other players in this game. But um, this is a huge, huge opportunity for us. The first time we've played Bournemouth since we beat them in that playoff final. They'll be out for revenge. But to be fair, that, that, that defeat against Watford's got me riled up and ready. Let's get into the FA Cup semi-final. Is it going to end up being productive for them? Here's George Savile. Coulson. Roberts. Plays it through to Roberts. That burst of pace from Patrick Roberts does get the shot away. And Cooper does get 
the block in there is spawn. The centre backs look absolutely huge. They look absolutely massive. Things is going to have a tough task ahead of them today. Oh, what a tackle from George Savile. Turns over possession. And there's a good run through the middle here from Callum Hudson Odoi. Hudson Odoi is in. Forces a good save from the keeper. Missed Hudson Odoi in that last game. And straight away, he's proven a problem for the Cherries. Philip Billing. Billing just keeps that Dennis away from Hudson Odoi. Good football, this from Bournemouth. They've worked it well on this right hand side. Hall's sold himself. The cross comes in, and that's a point blank save by Bettinelli. Huge save. The header was straight at him, but he slapped a save it as Paddy McNair now makes a huge save. A huge block. And just like that, Bournemouth come close to scoring themselves. But I'll tell you what, what a ball that is to Hudson Odoi. We've got so many men in behind. Roberts is one of them. And Roberts has his shot saved. But Danny Ings is there. And I preferred the cross to go to Ings in the first place, but. Well, as we a valuable, Jerry, priceless he's lead. Critical, and I'll stress, I've never been a goalkeeper, but surely he's got to do better than that. His mistake leads to the goal. No Could have squared it with Roberts, but uh, we chose to shoot. The keeper did save it, but it was straight into the path of Ings. And that was counter-attacking football at its best from back to front. One ball from Balassi to Hudson Odoi. And we suddenly had two on two in the area. Ings and Roberts had the box to themselves really and we lead in this FA Cup quarter final Grant Hall the host really haven't had too much of the ball but again we've seen it before we'll see it again their counter attack play has been absolutely fantastic pace really hurts defenses and they've got that in abundance Coulson his pace is causing Bournemouth problems again and McNair well he's skipped past Billing plays a lovely one too with Patrick Roberts and Paddy McNair with a lovely Borough goal as we slice our way through the Bournemouth defence easy as you like 1-2 goal he skipped past Billing 1-2 around the defender and he had choices of one well, type of finish to apply. What a nice little goal Lovely that was. For the smash. Lovely goal. I think it's only his second goal of the season for Paddy McNair, but it's a hoot. it's a very important one. As it gives us a little bit of breathing room over Bournemouth. It's going their way. 2-0. Now David Brooks. Oh, Brooks, that's nice. That's nice, I've got to admit. He's uh, done Coulson there. Here's Solanke. Brings out Gibson. The defence just getting a little bit stretched. But Yannick on the cover. Roberts. Roberts with a nice flick. Hudson Adoy. Gibson. Okay. Now. Luckily that ball comes back to us and look at the room on the right for Spence and reminder that we have more action for big interception for Bournemouth. Up. It's Middlesbrough facing Aston Villa. Yeah, Derek should be. Oh, what a ball in behind this is, and it's a good chance. I think it was Stanislas there, as that's the first time Bournemouth have got in for quite some time. Spence was just caught forward, but there was enough pressure on Stanislas for him to miss the chance. Good football this, we've threaded it through a needle, and what a tackle that is on Danny Ings. That was a huge tackle as we were about to pull the trigger, although Hayden Coulson finds Roberts. He finds Hudson Adoy, and Hudson Adoy with a wonderful finish. Near post. That was an absolute rocket into the near corner. Well, here it is again. The through ball is perfectly timed. Cuts back on his left. But as good as the move And well, if that's his weaker foot, what a shot that is. Terrible. 
What's the keeper not expecting it? I don't really know. He shouldn't be beaten there. But we don't care one bit. This has been a really dominant performance. And you'd like to hope that now we have one foot in the FA Cup semi-final. This is looking rather comfortable. Diego Rico. So 20 minutes to go. Oh, once again, it's a poor ball from Bournemouth, although Coulson gives it back to them this time. It might be on for them. Don't want to give them an easy route back into the game, and that's exactly what we've done. There it is. They've done it. Defence was all over the place, and Jefferson Lerma, I think it is, gets a goal back for Bournemouth. As we've carelessly just lost our concentration and gave the ball away in a stupid position. Well, you tell youngsters in that position just to hit the Gibson was out. Paul was also right next to him. And he does and he scores. Yeah, just a mess, really. Bertinelli can't do anything about that. Good job we've got a three-goal lead because with 15 minutes to go, it's now only a two-goal lead. It's 3-1. Stacey's in behind Coulson here. Flank. Brooks. Brooks. And Lerma. Turns. Coulson inside. Jefferson Lerma allowed to run. They've given it away. Owen oh, Gibson's give the ball away. We're shooting ourselves in the foot here and Hall brings down Solanke. And Bournemouth have a penalty. And it's a red card for Grant Hall. He's off. We reached for a last gasp tackle. Maybe we didn't need to. As Solanke sort of had to take the ball and turn. Bettinelli could have got out to him. But we might be in a bit of trouble as Bournemouth could make it 3-2. David Brooks to step up. And it's a save from Bettinelli. Big hat, right hand from Bettinelli there. A fantastic save when we needed it the most. Two hands, what a great save. And that might just save us a nervy finish. But of course we are a man down, so we're just going to... Stick. We're going to have to do a bit of rearranging here. We're going to need McNair to come back into the central defence. We'll put Tav on the left because he's just come on. Leave the number 10 spot vacant and Balassi will give way for Morsi. And a substitution in the offing. That does mean Grant Hall will miss the semi-final if we get there. We are in for a nervy final couple of minutes. Stanislas crosses it in. So it's Billing who goes up, but it doesn't matter about the penalty save. Because Billing smashes Bournemouth within one. He got the initial header and it just, well, it hung up in the air and he was first to it and he couldn't miss. A chance to revisit the goal. It could have went anywhere, but it fell back down to Billing and he finished it well. And from 3-0 up and cruising, we're now clinging on with just over five minutes to go. Can we hang on to this place in the semi-final? Marcy venturing forward. If we dare go forward in the position we're in. But as long as the ball's as far away from our goal as possible. Doesn't bother me. Spence wins a good throw in. And we're going to just do exactly what any team would in this situation. And that's keep it in the corner. It probably would be the end of the story. Hudson Adoy, call. We're going to call for Tav to come across, and you know exactly what we're going to do in this scenario. 
Tav is going to hold on to this for dear life. And making sure nothing untoward happened following the cross. Try and win a throw in. This is what an FA Cup semi final means. We're doing it the hard way. We're doing it the way only Borough know how. Well, Although Spence does lose the ball. Luckily, Bournemouth played forward but played out. Hudson Adoy plays it across to Gibbo. Just keep the ball, lads. Do not do anything stupid. Well, they know they need to stop him. As the Gibson clock now. is ticking ever closer. Realizing that it might to that magical 95 minute mark here is Spence. And the cross is very much on. Spence charges forward. See if we can win a cross or a throwing, and we have won a throwing. We've managed this game really well since going 3 2 up. Hudson Adoy now is going to try and keep it in the corner, and he wins us a corner. And I think some tough game management has got us over the line. It should never have been this difficult. And we've done it the, the borough way by making it ridiculously horrible. It's a short one. But unless the referee gives them a ridiculous lengthy stoppage, the whistle has gone. And we have just, and I mean just, beaten Bournemouth. And we do book our place in the FA Cup semi-final. That wasn't easy. Well, that was the definition of smooth sailing up until the last 15 minutes. And then it all just went wrong. Grant Hall will serve a one-match ban. That might only be for the next Premier League game. It might not actually be for the semi-final. And I'm intrigued to see who it is that we come up with, in, uh, who we come up against in that semi-final. Of course, we were meant to have played a Premier League game this weekend, and we haven't. And uh, results haven't exactly gone our way, as we now have dropped to 12th. Um... Still in a you know perfectly safe position, but um, yeah, we, we do have a, a game in hand on, on Leicester at least. So we might be able to get back up into 11th, maybe. It does very much like look like the top of the... Uh, top of the bottom half of the table, if that makes sense. We have our next game, or one of our next games rescheduled. That is the home game against Everton. We've got some more prize money, which means the draw has been drew for the FA Cup semi-final. I can't remember what the results were of the first round, but we're going to just quickly, if I can, go back around. So I didn't see the results there, but Man City knocked out Wolves. Leeds beat West Ham. Oh, sorry, no, West Ham beat Leeds on penalties. We, of course, beat Bournemouth. And Arsenal knocked out Manchester United, which means... The FA Cup semi-finals are Manchester City versus West Ham and we head to Arsenal. And the last time we played a domestic cup semi-final against Arsenal, it was 2004 against the Invincibles. We beat them twice over two legs and went on to win the League Cup final against Bolton. Is that an omen? I don't know. I certainly hope it is. But City West Ham. And we are away to Arsenal. And if we have a quick look on the calendar. There it is. And of course, FA Cup semi-finals are, I believe, at Wembley. That's why it says neutral. So uh, we're back to Wembley again in a domestic cup game as well. And that is the FA Cup semi-final, which is very exciting. A couple of games to play between now and then, a couple of episodes, but uh, we will finish this one at least at home to a team who are just above us in the table and a team we can overtake, actually. Um, a team who beat us not too long ago, and that is Aston Villa. So Lewis Wing has been in the office. Um, he's 100% recovered, he says, from injury. 
Well, let's just say it could take a while. We'll, we'll see how his fitness is doing for this game, but it is certainly good to see him back in the team. And uh, Hall is suspended for this one. And um, I feel like even Nathan would a chance alongside Gibbo today, as uh, Mackinnon yeah, didn't do too well against Watford. He, he was okay, but we'll put Wood in there. And um, I think I'll give Tav a start on the left. And I'm going to give Origi a start as well. Let's give Origi a go in the league. Um, so, yeah, that's the team I think we're going to go with. So, the usual back five, barring Wood coming in for the suspended Grant Hall. The midfield remains the same, other than that left wing position, which is usually up for grabs anyway. And uh, we're going to give Origi a start in this game. So, let's head to the Riverside at home to Villa. Antonio. Here's Mikhail Antonio. Villa's new number 10. How about that for a signing? Bergwies cuts inside and... Well, the referees... Well, I don't know what he's given there. He's gave them a free kick. It must have just been on the outside of the area. That's as close as you can get to a penalty. I mean, I don't know where the foul came from, to be fair. But I'm sure if it was a couple of feet closer to the goal, he might have been a penalty. So Bergwies, I think it is, with a free kick from literally the edge of the box. Can he get an up and over? The answer is no. Savage by the commentators there. Gibbo stepping out from defence as we know he's so good at doing. Roberts. Turning their defence inside out, it falls to Origi, who absolutely skies it. Origi, got to be burying that in the far corner. And instead he buried it in Rose's head. McNair with a very strong tackle. Now Saddle. He's really had a good couple of games for us, Paddy. He's bossed the midfield in every game he's been in. And Origi's in for a second time. This time, he doesn't make any mistake. And in fact, he just chips the keeper. Thought he was offside at first, but must have just been level. Oh, I think he was just level, perfectly timed by Saville. How does Origi respond to missing a sitter? Does exactly that, dinks it over Tom Heaton and puts us in the lead. Origi with another goal here, his second for us in the Premier League. And we lead Aston Villa, but... We led them at Villa Park. We lost the game. So let's not take anything for granted. Berkwist does well against Coulson. Oh, look at that for some dribbling as well by Sanson. This cross was a dangerous one, but we've dealt with it. And there could be a... Well, I was going to say there could be a counter-attack on, but Tav's ball is a shocker to hudson Adoy. Matt Target, El Ghazi, and space for the cross. El Ghazi now beats Spence. Got some nippy players of Villa. Bergwies is in the box. Oh, McNair's been beaten. And that is a poor goal to concede. We just kept committing defenders, mistiming the tackle, and Villa's first real chance. Results in a goal. McNair commits there. Well, we're in trouble after that. Good finish. Back to square one. Good ball over the top to Gilbert. There's Berghaus, I think he's pronounced. Again, Villa's players are causing us problems. It's a ball across to El Ghazi. Well, he's got to hit the target, surely. 
Bettinelli was scrapping to get back across. Maybe should have scored a second there, Villa. Coulson showing his pace in field. Oh, Roberts. He's completely done the defender. And what a goal from Roberts. Absolutely top class. So the entire defence well, with sure. one and why not when you've got slight dummy it. there. Beautiful strike. stuff. Could he finish it? Of course he could. Well, the goal again, albeit from a different angle. Coulson was doing his best to block it, I think. But we've uh, been under quite a lot of pressure since Villa's equaliser. They've been the better team. And that just swings the momentum back to us. Not far off half time either. Great goal from Roberts. 2 1 to the Borough. Well, as they kick off again, 2 1 the current state of affairs. Marvellous Nakamba. Well, that is how to nullify the. Well, Nakamba almost found Nathan Wood, and that would have been a very. Very good ball through, but Roberts now plays through Origi. He's got the pace on the defender. And forces a good save from Tom Heaton as we finish the half strongly. Origi has been so good in behind with his pace. And the Borough crowd are up once again. Well, what a start the second half. This could be Savile dancing his way through the defence. Origi's in here. Origi cuts inside, shots blocked, Tav's in. Perfect challenge. And his shot is blocked at the very last second. Well, Derek, they're not happy. Ref is taking the brunt of this. Borough fans seem to think we should have had a penalty there, I'm not too sure. Excellent referee. There'll certainly be a few more boos if Villa go up our end and score here. Oh, Gibson, too slow on the turn. Luckily, the shot was blocked. Getting news of a goal in well, that clearance. <laughs> that clearance has ended up being a great pass. And then Origi's hacked down. As it's getting a bit juicy, this one. And don't forget, we have more Premier League action coming up for you on EA TV. It's Middlesbrough taking on Leeds United. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Always a great Antonio Anguisa. Good ball in. Good save. Oh, El Ghazi is denied by Bettinelli there. But hope in the form of a corner. Burkhouse with a corner. And over comes the corner. Ops to go near post to Sanson and. And his touch was shocking. Comes back in though, is Sanson again. Oh, and a shot as it falls to Miguel Antonio, and he puts it wide. Sort of came across him quite quickly, and he chose to shoot first time. I've got to say, that's a great signing from Villa. Maybe he should be doing better. Antonio. Matt Target. It's with Nakamba. Antonio. Antonio cuts inside. Oh, Wood leaves one on him there. Gladly let them have the advantage. Berghaus plays it down. Coulson's two on one here as Tav's just stood there. Not really helping him out at all. Nakamba. Triore. Antonio blocked by Wood. Antonio again blocked by Gibble. And now it's in for Berghaus with an unbelievable save from Bettinelli. What a save. Came out, made himself big, and I don't even think that was going in, actually. I think it was hitting the near side netting. But even then, Bettinelli wasn't to know that's a great save, and in fact, he's won as a goal kick. Some heroic defending there by the boys. And it's a matter of what occurs in the final 15 minutes. Gibbo. Well, Origi's done really well to vacate the space, which allowed the run from Roberts. Roberts played it back to Origi, who made no mistake. 
and he gives us this vital, vital third goal. You watch the run by Roberts, uh, by Origi originally, sorry, it opens up the room for Roberts to run into and then Origi turns, directs himself to the centre and every time we play in behind Origi, he gets on the end of every ball with his pace and has the ability to finish. He really has shown something in this game. Two for him, three for the team and we're now 3-1 up. Giving Danny Ings something well, to think is. about. Three, one, the current scoreline. Villa with a corner. Ten minutes to go. Played into the center of the box. This is about the time we conceded against Bournemouth. And we've done it again. They still believe Tyrone Mings smashes it home. And like against Bournemouth, look, we've got a nervy finish. Sure. Like with before, we went up with a header. It was a 50-50. Wood lost it. Came back down. They played it into Mings, who had too much room in the box. And even a centre-back with his weaker foot was able to finish that. And all of a sudden, like against Bournemouth, nervy end to try and hang on here. Neutrals are getting the money's worth. Here's McNair. As we are almost there with what could be a big win. We've just hoofed that into the corner. I think it will be a goal kick, actually. And hopefully this will be the last kick of the game. Tom Heaton to punt this forward. In fact, he's played it short. Maybe that's to try and see if the ref will give them more time. But he doesn't, and we cling on to a big three points in the league, and we get revenge on Villa. Good game, but we beat them 3-2. So that win then puts us back above Aston Villa. Fletcher is not happy about the lack of games. I mean, he's been coming off the bench. He's still in the squad. He's just up against two very good strikers with Ings and now Origi, who's really stepped up to the plate. Grant Hall is now back after his brief suspension. And, uh, well, that win puts us above Villa, above Leicester, and back into 10th place. And once again, played 30, won 10, drew 10, lost 10. Something tells me we're going to finish the league somewhere around, I don't know, winning 13, drawing 12, losing 12, something like that. I don't know what the math is, but there you go. We're mid-table, completely smack bang in the middle, as middle as you could be. And that is where I am comfortable. But a good episode for us, an unbeaten episode. Uh, well, not an unbeaten episode, actually. I forgot about that horrific first game when we conceded a last-minute sucker punch to the... Second to bottom team, Watford, which wasn't great, but we've bounced back with two wins in the league and in the cup. And most importantly, booked our place in the semi-final of the FA Cup, which won't be coming up in the next episode, but it will be in the episode after that, which will be very exciting as we are three episodes away from the end of the season. But if you've enjoyed this video, once again, guys, hit the like button, of course. It really helps the video out and the channel, of course. Subscribe if you haven't already for much more FIFA 21 content we have this manager career mode at the Borough, and we also have a my play career mode at Salford City. So check that out too if you've uh, not already. But until next time, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.